A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception, to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iterea and Trachonitis and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene during the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was growing up in St. Philomena Parish, which is now St. Francis Cabrini, we had a wonderful pastor, Monsignor Fazzo, and he had a really gravel voice. Uh, I've been having that kind of gravel voice recently uh, due to a cold, and his voice would sometimes scare you. Uh, It sounded really kind of rough, and uh, sometimes you felt really kind of Um, scared of him because of his rough voice and I wonder sometimes uh, about the voice of John the Baptist I wonder what the voice sounded like because the Bible doesn't tell us anything about how his voice sounded at all I mean was it a yelling voice was it a strong voice was it a stern voice Uh, was it a harsh voice whatever that voice was it drew attention and it drew attention from various types of people. And John the Baptist was trying to get people ready for the coming of the Lord. And what he was trying to tell them was the Lord is coming. And he's coming 
because he wants to save you. That's the important thing that we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, because sometimes people get the impression Jesus is coming, God is coming to judge you, to condemn you, to cast you off, to punish you. But I think the, the, the purpose of, of Christ was to bring us salvation. And salvation isn't just going to heaven. Salvation is a sense of well-being, a sense of peace, a sense of, of, um, of being in a good place with God. And Jesus wants to establish that for all of us. Because in the beginning of our creation, God placed in each one of us something that was very good. And as St. Paul says, what good he's put into you, he wants to bring to perfection. So it's not a matter of you becoming good. Good has already been placed in each one of us. And what the Lord wants us to do, allow that good to come forth in each one of us. And so St. John the Baptist is yelling and saying, let the good come out. Let God come and save you from anything that prevents you from being all that God wanted you to be. And probably during this time of Advent, when we think about God saving us, we always think about confession. It's a time to go to confession before Christmas. A lot of people like to go to confession maybe a couple times a year before Christmas and before Easter. But sometimes people are afraid of confession. I can understand that because I am too. I don't like to go to confession personally. I'm a priest. I don't like to go to confession because uh, I've had bad experiences in confession, really bad. Priests being mean, priests being condemning, priests being rude, and priests being not Christian in that confessional box. I, was, I remember one time a priest actually told me, I was only 16 years old, that I did not love God enough for him to give me absolution. Could you imagine? He said it loud enough so everybody in the line could hear it, by the way. So the, it was an embarrassing moment. And that is with me all the time. But what is this priest going to do when you lay your heart out to the priest and tell them those, mo those moments of sin, those moments of weaknesses that you wouldn't want to tell anybody else, but you're telling him, and you make yourself vulnerable to this priest and hoping that this priest is going to be compassionate and merciful and helpful. And in some cases, uh, very rarely now, I hope, that these priests have taken advantage of that. You're a terrible person. I remember one time, I think um, I did something, I forget exactly what it was, but I mean, it, Hitler was a better man than me, according to this priest. Um, remember this, the, the sacrament of reconciliation, the confessional is supposed to be the safest place in the world for us. It's a place where we can lay bare our faults, our sins, or whatever it is, and be confident that we're going to meet the compassionate and loving Lord. And it's the, it's the responsibility of the priest to make that possible. And I tell converts, those who are becoming Catholics, even when I'm teaching over at school, if ever you go to confession and a priest is being rude to you or being so judgmental to you that it's very, very uh, uncomfortable, walk out of that confessional. Leave. You don't deserve that. Jesus came to bring God's compassion and mercy and forgiveness. That was a problem that John the Baptist had with Jesus. Yeah, John the Baptist had problems with Jesus. He thought Jesus was a little too, too, too nice. John the Baptist was pretty severe. Jesus seemed to be too nice to the point that John the Baptist at one point maybe even doubted that Jesus was the Messiah. But then Jesus had to reassure him. The blind are seeing, the lame are walking. You know, it is with the way the Lord has called me to be is to be the loving father to these people. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare for Christmas, a lot of things are going on in the world, a lot of stuff is happening. But take advantage of this time of the year to allow the Lord to save you. And by allowing the Lord to save you, uh, see yourself as you really are. Go to confession. Tell the priest exactly what's going on. And allow the priest to show you God's love and compassion. 
and that will bring you salvation. Not salvation only to go to heaven, but salvation now, where you'll feel the sense of peace and well-being and a sense of happiness, a sense of feeling good, the fact that your life is lovable, your life is important, your life is value to God and to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, as seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now present to our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, all clergy, and the Church at large, that the Holy Spirit strengthen, protect, and help them to be examples of holiness to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may guide the minds of those who govern, so that they may work in a spirit of cooperation to safeguard the rights and dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit will reawaken our hearts to live as disciples who bring good news and compassion to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will heal those who are ill, strengthen their caregivers, and inspire all who are seeking cures for illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Heavenly Father will hear the intentions that we each bring here today in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that God will welcome those who have died, especially Gloria Meyer, and welcome them into the peace and joy of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lord grant special blessings upon Joan Stumpf and Sarah Shoemaker, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for coming to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, to offer us your salvation. Help us to believe in your power to save us as we present our petitions to you through Christ our Lord. Let us sing together our offertory hymn, number 38, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 38.
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our own cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let, them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, open for us the way to eternal salvation. And then he comes again in glory and majesty and all at last is made manifest. We who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. As with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your beloved sons and daughters. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, George. Peace, Christ. Peace, we are. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us sing together our communion hymn, number 459, Shepherd Me, O God, number 459. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears from death into life. 
Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this holy mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Thank you for being a Mass uh, this morning. I appreciate that very much. And Holy Cross is strengthened by your presence here. I want to wish you a happy and a safe and a healthy week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May all the peace, the power, and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever.
Let us go and now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. We will close our celebration with number six, nine, Every Valley. We will do verses one and three, number six, nine. Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway. A highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. Stand up on the mountain top, O lift your voice to the world. Sing joyfully, Jerusalem, behold, behold your God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every hill made low. And all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord.